Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship. Thank you for braving the cold. I think you all get an extra gold star this morning for um, and the other thing too I want to let you know is that I know as Lutherans we have assigned seats. You've been sitting in the same seat since Jesus walked the earth. But if you so feel compelled to move on forward, I told everybody if Bob and Charles can sit in the front row, so can you. So if you feel so moved, please feel free to move up. Since we are a small but mighty group, as we always said growing up in church choir, it's, it's not about the quantity, it's about quality, right? And we're quality here as community. So if you feel brave enough, thank you, Lynn. Sit in the front row or the fourth row. Thanks, Carrie. That's perfect. A couple of things I'd like to just draw our attention to. First off is that our King of Glory vision team has been hard, hard at work. And we would like to update you with where we are at in the process. So please join us next Sunday, January 21st, over in the parish hall. We'll have coffee and goodies, and the vision team will be there on hand just to update you with where we are in the process, as well as to get your feedback and input. We want to hear what you think about all of the work we've done so far, so please join us for that. Also, I'll be offering a new member class on Sunday, February 18th. If you're interested in joining or you know someone that might be interested in joining, please let me know. That'll be immediately after worship. Uh, we'll join for some conversation and an opportunity to get to know one another. And then my last two announcements this week are about Lent. Yes, I, I know. It's like, oh my gosh, it's, it's like we're planning for this. We are. Ash Wednesday is on Valentine's Day this year. Uh, the joke I'm making is that there's no better day to remember your mortality than on Valentine's Day. So please join us. We'll have two worship opportunities on February 14th. The first one will be at noon. It'll be an abbreviated Ash Wednesday service followed by a luncheon. All of the food will be provided for that. So if you don't like driving at night or maybe you work during the day and you want to sneak away just for a quick abbreviated worship service and food, please come join us. And then we will be offering our normal Ash Wednesday service, the full service at seven o'clock that evening. So two opportunities to worship on Ash Wednesday. And then following that on Wednesdays in Lent, we'll be doing things just a little differently this year. Instead of meeting in the evening, we will be offering a noon potluck luncheon followed by a Bible study. And so watch out for a sign up for that to sign up to help bring things We'll be providing sandwiches, but we're asking folks to bring sides and things like that just to help supplement the meal. And then what we'll be doing is we'll be incorporating pieces of Holden evening prayer into our Sunday worship. So it's not that we're not going to be hearing that music. We'll hear it on Sundays, uh, but we've decided to try something a little different. And this will also foster community, engage in relationship and conversation as well. So looking forward to that. And all of those dates are listed in your announcement sheet if you wanna go ahead and get all of that plugged in. So those are all of our announcements this morning. And now I'll prepare us or invite us to prepare our hearts and minds for worship with our musical meditation. Our gathering song this morning is number 314 in your red hymnal, 314, Arise, Your Light Has Come. Please stand as you are able. Comfort those who mourn, 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. This is the feast of victory. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day, praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and kiddos, come on up for a sermon for all of God's kids. All right. 
Good morning. All right. Awesome. Hey, we've got a big group up here this morning. I'm impressed. All right, my little guy's like, not sure. That's all right. Okay. So you know how I always start off with a question. What is the coolest thing you have ever done? Coolest thing, or maybe coolest place you've ever been. Coolest thing ever. Wow. You all have never traveled anywhere. You've never been anywhere. You've never done anything. You've never seen anything. Well, we have. Molly and Samantha, what you got the for me? Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. London. Yeah, see, that's, those are the kind of answers I'm looking for. What else? We got the Eiffel Tower, London. The rest of you have never done or anything cool? No? What about you guys? Didn't we do something? Oh, when we go to the Cheyenne Mountain, remember the zoo? Monster Jam. You guys ever done to a monster truck rally before? That's pretty cool. Yes. Oh, cousin house. Oh, cousin's house. That's pretty fun. When we go visit visit our cousin in Nebraska, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, you got another one for me? When you first learned how to swim, that's cool. You got another one? Disneyland, right? Have you all ever done anything fun? You're like, mm, not sure. Okay. Well, whatever you think of, you got one for me, Alice? You went to Oregon. Did you get to do like really cool things or did hang on? Knocked over by a wave. Knocked over by a wave. That's epic. Carried in. Carried in. Oh my goodness. Yeah, but and cousin time too. Nothing can beat cousin time, right? That's always fun. So when you think about these really cool things that you've done and places you've been and things that you've seen, is it enough just to tell people about it? Or do you also want to be like, I wish you could have been there and experienced this with me? What's better? Telling the story or getting to share it with someone else? Like, come see this thing with me. Share it, right? Because we all have these awesome things that happen to us, but sometimes it's hard to tell. Like, how can you capture the majesty of the Eiffel Tower unless you actually go there to see it in person, right? The reason I ask this, because here in a minute, we're going to hear our gospel reading from John, where Jesus is calling his first disciples. And there's a beautiful invitation that's made to come and see. Come and see. I don't want, just, I don't want to just tell you about how, how awesome and big and amazing God's love is. I don't want to just tell you about Jesus. I want you to experience it for yourself. And that's the invitation that we get. So here's one more question. You guys are like, it's so cold. Our brains just are not. It's okay. I understand. Here's one more quick question. Where have you seen God at work in the world? With this invitation to come and see God's love and God's presence. Have you seen God anywhere lately? No. You haven't? Do you know where I see God? Right now in each one of you. You know why? Because you bring joy to us with your smiles and your energy and your curiosity, right? You, you are a God moment for all of us, right? Congregation, right? Absolutely, yeah. Where else have you seen God at work? Did anybody eat dinner last night? Who ate dinner last night? Yeah, do you eat breakfast this morning? Who helped you with all that food? Did you do it yourself? Who made our chili last night? Parents, right? We're thankful. When we serve one another, right? That's God at work in the world, right? So I want you to be thinking about this week, where is God showing up in the world? And this invitation to come and see, come and see, come and experience God's abundant love that is all around us and all people in times, places, and spaces, all right? So everybody take your hands like this and let us pray. Dear God, thank you for your love, which is always with us. Open our eyes and our hearts to your presence and help us to share your love with all we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
thank you, friends. You can head back to your seats. A reading from the book of 1 Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again, a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, see, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears it tingle. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expedited, sacrifice, or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the door of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, here I am. Eli said, what was it he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you, and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up and the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. A reading from the book of 1 Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and will also raise us by power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body. But the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you? which you have from God, and that you are not your own, for you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Word of God, word of life. 
Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the son of man. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Last fall, I was standing at my kitchen sink, washing up dishes, attempting to corral the kids to get out of the house for school. And I, I happened to look outside our kitchen window and I noticed that there was something perched on top of our fence. So I was like, what, what is that? And so I, I, I looked a little closer and I realized it was a fox sitting on top of our fence. And it wasn't just any fox, it was the neighborhood fox. We have this red fox that wanders around our neighborhood that gets captured on everybody's security cameras and all of the neighbors are talking, did you see the fox? I saw the footprints, did you see the fox? So I thought, there it is, there it is, oh my goodness. So I, I hollered over to the boys who were in another room. I said, guys, come and see, you gotta see this, come quick. So we all rushed to the window and, and we all just stand there and stare at this beautiful fox, just the, the magnificence of creation and how even though we're in the middle of suburbia, God's creation is all around us. And then quickly the fox hopped off the fence into a, a neighbor's yard. But, but for me, it was one of those experiences where I, I didn't want to just tell the boys, hey guys, guess what I saw out of the window? I wanted them to experience it for themselves. I wanted them to see the fox themselves. And it was just this, this really kind of beautiful moment. And then we had to return back to the hectic busyness that is the morning, right, of trying to get kids out of the house and to school. Well, the reason I, I tell you this story is because of this simple invitation to come and see. And that's why I love this gospel reading. Not just because there's a disciple named Nathaniel, and you all know I have a very important Nathaniel in my life. And by the way, Nathaniel only shows up in John's gospel. So, and he's only mentioned a couple of times, but for some reason he just shows up here in John. Uh, but the other reason why I really like this gospel is because of this invitation that Philip offers Nathaniel to come and see. It is a simple yet incredibly profound invitation. So here's how the story goes. Jesus is calling his first disciples. He calls Philip. Philip says, yes, I will follow you. And then Philip goes off to Nathaniel and says, hey, we found him. 
We found the one that we've all been waiting for, the one that the prophets spoke of, the one who has all of our hopes and dreams. We found him, Jesus, son of Joseph of Nazareth. And did you hear Nathaniel's reply? Instead of saying, oh boy, we found him, the reply is, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Do you just hear like the, the disappointment? <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to get a sip of water really quick. Hold on. I've got a tickle in my throat. We'll get on top of the coughing before it gets any worse. And it's almost as if Nathaniel is saying, what do you mean? The Messiah is coming from Nazareth? This middle of nowhere town that's like barely a blip on the radar. That's where the Messiah is coming from, who's going to, to challenge and push back against the powers and authorities of this world. Nazareth? And I love how Philip responds. Instead of Philip saying, okay, well, well, here are 10 reasons why Nazareth is the perfect place for Jesus to be from, or here are 10 reasons why you should follow me right now, or launching into some theological diatribe on why Nathaniel should follow him immediately. He offers a simple invitation. Come and see. See it for yourself. Experience it for yourself. And so Nathaniel says, okay, fine. So he follows Philip. Nathaniel meets Jesus. And while I think we don't have all of the details and all of the story behind this encounter, when Nathaniel does encounter Jesus, he is transformed. He is changed. He's no longer a naysayer, but he knows and sees clearly for who Jesus is. He says, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And I would gather to say that Nathaniel's life and Philip's life and everybody else who comes in contact with Jesus will never be the same all from this simple invitation to come and see. This is what our journey is about. Right? Each and every day we're called to come and see God at work in the world and also to invite others into this. And the reason why I love this simple yet profound invitation is because it has no preconceived idea about how the, someone else will experience God. It also accounts for our own uniqueness, the ways in which we do hear and experience God in our midst and in the world. It, it, it gives space and grace for our own individual spiritual journeys as we journey this together as a community. And I think we need to hear this as the church. Now I'm saying church in a very broad sense, okay? So not us, but everybody in general with church. Have you ever heard somebody say, well, that's great that you experienced God that way, but that's kind of odd. You ever had that happen to you before? That's kind of weird. Or I, I hear what you're saying, but that doesn't fit inside of our little box. Or if you don't have this particular experience of God, then somehow you're, you're, you're not on the right track. Have you ever heard that before? Or any variation of those before? Almost like if you don't have my experience, you're wrong. I want to tell you right now, that's bleh. Do we have a better word for that? I'm just going to say bleh, okay? <laughs> because with this invitation to come and see, each and every single one of us experience and perceive God, the gift of God's love in ways that are unique to us and resonate with our own, our own hearts, our own stories, our own minds. And that's the beautiful thing about what it means to be human. But God is always on the move in each and every single person's life. So this is, I think, our gift as the church is to invite people to come and see. Not the way we see or the way that we experience, but my goodness, I experience God's love and grace and mercy and forgiveness each and every single moment of my life. Why would I not want somebody else to experience that, right? Why would I want, not want somebody else to be drawn into this life-giving relationship with God? Why would I not want that? So when I invite someone to come and see, it's come and see, come and experience 
And when I offer that simple invitation, I trust that God will show up because God always does show up and that the spirit will take care of the rest. Just like Philip invited Nathaniel, Jesus showed up and Jesus in that way transformed and restored all of those people back into this way of life. You see, this invitation is also given to us from God through Jesus to come and see our God experience God whose heart and desire is for war to be no more, for, for swords to be beaten into plowshares, for peace and justice to reign within God's kingdom. We're invited from God through Jesus to come and see this God who shows up in our lives, oftentimes in ordinary yet profound ways, through bread and fish, through water turned to wine, through a healing touch, a warm welcome to invite all people, and ultimately, from God through Jesus, we're invited to come and see the love of our God, which knows no bounds or exclusions. This love that will never give up for anyone, even when we as humanity turn our back on God and nail Jesus to a cross. God will always say yes to us by raising Jesus from the dead. And church, that is where we come and see through that promise of the empty tomb that God's life and love win. And that is ultimately what we're inviting people to experience. God's love, God's life, and this promise of God to make all things new. So church, here's your homework. You ready for your homework? I think it's been a couple weeks since I've given you, I gave you a break. I gave you a vacation. This week, I'd like you to go home and think about, just like I asked with the kiddos, where have you seen God at work lately? Maybe it's your light in your life, Maybe it's in the life of someone else. Maybe it's outside in the world, wherever it is. Remember, there is no right or wrong answer to this. This is your experience. I want you to write that down on a piece of paper, and I want you to celebrate that. Say, thanks be to God that we had that aha epiphany moment, right, of being able to say, ah, there's God at work in the world. And, and I hope that that will give you hope, that that will sustain you for your journey. And the next thing I want you to think about then, too, is how is God inviting you to invite others to come and see? And the ways that we primarily do that is the ways that we love all and serve all. Because you and me, we are the ways in which God's love and God's presence are made known in the world. We're God's little epiphanies. Remember we talked about last week how we're God's Little, God's little stars shining forth in the world. How is God inviting you to invite others, just like Philip did for Nathaniel, to come and see? And my prayer for us as a community of faith is that together we will continue to, to see and experience our God, our God who raises the dead back to new life. And may we as always be vessels and channels of God's love for all people so that all may have life and have life abundantly. Amen. Our song of the day is number 798, 798 in your red hymnal. Will you come and follow me? Please stand as you are able. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go with you and know and never be the same? 
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. Each prayer concludes with God of grace, and the congregation responds, receive our prayer. You may kneel or be seated. Encourage the ministry and mission of the church, God of truth. Let the leaders of your church be trustworthy and accountable stewards, that all its resources and outreach bring hope and healing to communities. God of grace, receive our prayer. God of fertile soil, delight in the goodness of your creation. Heal areas of the world harmed by human greed. Restore those recovering from natural disaster. Protect our forests and waterways and all the creatures that live in them. God of grace, receive our prayer. Call the leaders of every city and nation to faithfully serve. Give them visions of justice and unity. Lead them to action that promotes equitable partnership and uplifts those on the margin of society. God of grace, receive our prayer. Hold in your care any who suffer and struggle, God of compassion. Be present with any who are oppressed, victims of racism or cultural bias, and all who long for respite or restoration. God of grace, receive our prayer. Give this congregation the anticipation and excitement of Samuel, so inspired and empowered to do your work in the world. Make us faithful as we build communities of inclusion and mutual care. God of grace, receive our prayer. Trusting God who raised Jesus and will also raise us in spirit and truth, we remember all who have died and are at peace among the saints, especially the Reverend 
Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., whose faithful advocacy for peace and justice continues to embolden the church. God of grace, receive our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you now to share a sign of God's peace with one another. Please stand for the offertory song printed on page six of your worship folder. Oh, 
Together, let us pray the offering prayer. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup you open heaven to, to us. us. Meet us, us at this table, table that, that we receive what we seek and follow your Son, Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. So Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father Amen. in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your, your will, will be done, done on earth as, as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our, our sins as, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save, save us from the time of trial, and deliver, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours, now and, and forever. Amen. At Jesus' table, heaven and earth are joined as one. Come and see. You may be seated.
God's table. God invites each and every single one of us to come and see. Come and experience, taste and see through this bread and this wine and this grape juice, God's abundant love, grace, mercy, and forgiveness that knows no bounds. And then united here at this table as one body in Christ, we are then sent forth out into the world to invite others to come and see the love, grace, mercy, and forgiveness of our God poured out freely for all people. So everyone is welcome and invited to this table for the gifts of God are free. First, I'll invite those who are worshiping online with us today to commune wherever you find yourself with some bread and some wine or some grape juice. And we will take this feast together. First with the bread. This is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. And now with the wine or the grape juice. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. And then for those gathered here in the space, as usual, we will continue to commune around the rail. When you are here, please feel, to, feel free to either stand or kneel, whatever is most comfortable. And if you need communion brought out to you, please let us know. Come now to the table for all this way. During communion, we'll sing hymn number 466, 466, in the singing. Body of Christ, given for you. 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 Body of Christ, given for you.
Let us pray. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food, and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory, now and forever. Amen. Please stand for our blessing. God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen. Our ascending song today is number 737 in your red hymnal, 737. He comes to us as one unknown. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3. Go in peace, you are God's beloved. Thanks be to God.